All right, is the recorder on? It sounds like it is. I'm gonna call to order the meeting of the Site Plan Review and Appearance Board for March 9th, 2022. And I'd like um, Rochelle to please call order. <coughs> call roll. Annette Gray is absent. Price Patton. Here. John Brewer. Here. Stephen Cohen. Here. Carol Perez. Here. Ed LaRue is absent. Dana Post Adler. Here. And um, I'd like approval of the agenda. Can I make a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Can we call roll? Okay, Annette Gray is absent. Price Patton? Uh, yes. John Brewer? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Barbara was absent. Dana Post Adler? Yes. And um, I'd like to ask the secretary to swear in the public. Can you please stand there and raise your right hand? You are going to speak. Thank you. By the authority vested in me as notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Please be seated. This is a quasi-judicial hearing, and um, I'm obliged to read these um, instructions at the beginning. This hearing shall be conducted in accordance with the City of Delray Beach quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city shall be permitted to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. The city commission, board members, staff, and the applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness. The city or the applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made upon personal views as to whether a project is a good project or not nor may a decision be based on the numbers of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. We are to um, swear in any witnesses now, which we've done, okay. And now we need to disclose any ex parte communications um, by our board members. Any ex parte communications? Chair, a couple of things real quick. Um, we actually missed uh, number five, which is comments from the public for non-agenda items. So if we can just call that first. Okay. We need any comments from the public on anything that is not on the agenda. Are there any comments? Stunned. Stunned there are none. So there are none. <laughs> And now we can ask our board members if there's any ex parte communications. None. And no. Chair, just so we're clear, um, we do only have the one quasi judicial item tonight, but we're calling item uh, 6A, which is 912 Palm Trail Townhomes, to ask for ex parte, correct? Correct. 912 Palm Trail Townhomes, 2022. Well, I talked to the applicant in the hallway. Okay. <laughs> But it was just explained exchanging pleasantries. Anybody else? No. Okay. No. So now the city staff enters the project file into the record, and that's Miss Buse. Hi, good evening, Jennifer um, Buse, planner for the city, 2022-103. Um, this is 912-2920 um, Palm Trail. Um, and this is a class one site plan modification for architectural elevation changes and the applicant is here. So you're gonna go over there. Yep, okay. The clicker should be there. It is. You wanna just ask them to pass that around? We were unsure of, the, uh, of our submission getting into the system so we've made a kind of a copy of it for everybody to take a look at what we're trying to do here. Anyway, good, good, good evening. My name is Tom Carney, uh, representing the applicant. Uh, this is Michael Stom, who is the uh, owner of the development and the developer, and he will be kind of explaining what we're trying to do here. But essentially, we, we are dealing with a site plan that was approved 
a little over a year ago. And the exterior of it was, as you are seeing by the photographs, really were, it was all white and very bleached looking and everything. We, we, have, we have made an attempt here with, the, with this new design to bring some color, some dimension. It certainly looks a lot better from the, from, uh, uh, than, the, than the prior uh, renderings. And um, I'm going to try and do this. Here, are, what, you want to just kind of explain what we're doing? Yeah, sure. Uh, Nice to meet you guys. Um, as Tom alluded to, so these are uh, part of a presentation. So th this kind of the first few pages runs through the uh, previously approved uh, class one SPRAB approval of all of the elevations. Uh, the building itself has not, the envelope has not changed. Uh, what we've tried to do is, if you'll notice, if you, Tom, if you keep flipping through, there's a very stark white design uh, with a lot of um, architectural uh, metal grills that would kind of kind of cantilever over a lot of the windows, some of which served as balconies and guardrails, some of which was just an aesthetic detail. Uh, what we are trying to do uh, through this modification, and that was a rendering of the uh, pre-approved or the previously approved in quarter three of last year elevation. So Tom, if you flip, what we've brought in is we've reduced the sizing and the scale of the metal grills, changed the color. Uh, we've added a porcelain uh, adhesive, so a porcelain tile that we uh, intend to adhese to the uh, stucco, and we've taken it up uh, numerous elevations as well as made the uh, window encasements all black, uh, black both inside and outside. And Tom, if you keep flipping through. We've changed the previously approved garage doors from being kind of all stark white to a combination between uh, metal and uh, black to fit in with the rest of the elevation. And if you keep going, ultimately speaking, uh, the bottom left here of the screen that you guys are looking at uh, would be a typical uh, prototype of a front and side elevation of the proposed uh, revision. You'll notice uh, the combination of the porcelain introduction of the changes in the window, uh, the scaling back of some of the previously approved metal grills, and a change in the color. You'll still see those grills as they serve as guardrails. And then on the third floor where there is a um, uh, elevation where there's a deck, uh, we've used them kind of aesthetically almost as a sunshade. Uh, and that's effectively the proposed modifications from our prior approved site. Do you have any questions? We're here to answer. Thank you. Now staff will make its presentation. I um, have a larger um, color material board that's probably easier to read than what's on there <clears throat> that they um, did provide. Um, as stated, this is minor architectural elevation changes. Um, this is in for permitting. Don't know if you guys have broken ground. I'm not 100% positive. We have on the bottom side here. Okay. Um, it is in the RM zoning district. There is R1 to the east, RL to the west, and RM to the north and um, south. This is kind of a bit of a history on it. The original class five approval was done in 2017. Um, you can see here that it is, each unit is three stories with three bedroom townhome. And then in 2021, they came in for a class one for architectural elevation changes. Um, there is no proposed changes to the footprint site plan landscaping. Um, I kind of put some pictures up here where you can see the first class five um, or the original class five site approval, um, the current approval from 2021, and then the proposed architectural elevation changes. These are some of the requests for the architectural elevation changes with the impact glass garage doors in bronze, impact doors and windows framed in black, the accent wall tile color, the aluminum railings in metallic black, the terracotta screen in black at the front entrance, and the reduction of the um, metal sunscreens. And um, they're keeping in with the masonry modern architectural style. Um, and again, the minor changes are to the railing design, garage doors, and accent colors and texture styles. The building's remaining in super wide as well. And again, these are just the proposed um, elevations. 
And that concludes my presentation. Do we have any public comments? As there are none, we're going to move on to the board discussion. Any comments, Steve? So, Chair, just before we begin, um, make sure that the applicant doesn't have any additional oh. rebuttal or cross-examination. Thank you. Any rebuttal or cross-examination, Mr. Carney? Thank you. All right. Now, Steve, board discussion. So the, uh, the original design of all white, you came in front of the board and I, we requested that they come back with a... No, they no. were approved. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, so you're just coming back to... Okay, yeah. And uh, the terracotta screen on the front there. They got garage doors that to show their windows. Is that like a glass impact glass garage door? Yeah, exactly. Correct. Yes. Yeah. If we could so just have the yeah, thank you for the mic. Yeah. Uh, Correct. The uh, garage doors are glass. Okay. And then that the stripe going down. That's the porcelain. That's the wall tile. Yeah, it's a porcelain. Uh, kind of a pewter gray porcelain that's carried up okay. some of the facade and then basically all of the ground floor elevation. Okay. I'm sorry, can you um, I say your name and address for the record, yeah. please? Yeah, first name's Michael, last name is Stom, spelled S-T-A-M-M, -M, 912 Palm Trail, Delray Beach, 33483. Thank you. Okay. Are there any, uh, there's no There's no roof balcony on here, right? Not, nothing on the roof? Nothing on the roof. The There are three-story townhomes, as you see. There is a small terrace on the third floor, which is right. where you see that metal projection. Very nice. Okay, I, I, have no, I have no other comments. Thank you. Price? Yeah, I think I think that came, when we when we approved it, there was a lot of, some debate up here that it was, it was too, um, too uniform and and uh, and then we're talking about how the I was supporting it but I think they were saying the shapes would uh, you know with the sun traversing across it and stuff I, I like these changes a lot you didn't you didn't cut down on the, on the massing of the building that looks to me like where you have those two screens sticking out on some of the renderings I don't see that looks like it's um, solid wall but you, you haven't changed the size of the uh, third no. floor terraces or anything, have you? Correct. Nothing has changed. We've actually eliminated them on some of the elevations just with sunshade studies, mm -hmm. uh, and then some of them have them. But the massing, the massing with some of the elevations and, and uh, you know, anything cantilever, and if anything would have shrunk compared to the last. And then the, um, the, the this facade, what was it? Is that the east-facing facade? Sure, that would be... I can't. Uh, yes, yeah, southeast. This, so we're looking at it from the southeast here. Yeah, you're looking at southeast. You'd be. Okay. No, no. I think it. I think it. It adds the, some of the contrast that the, did Mr. Silberstein design the changes? Uh, no, he did not. He he was involved um, in the initial, and then we uh, went to a different registered architect to kind of fit in with more what we thought fit the character of the neighborhood a little bit. Okay, um, thank you. I'm good. Okay, Carol. Yeah, I don't think I was here um, in May when this came uh, before us because I don't remember it, but I think your changes are an improvement. Um, I think it looks very nice. Thanks. And um, so on the ground floor, those are private patios. Like on the very right hand side, I see grill work. Is that yeah, so there's a six foot privacy fence a kind of a cmu wall and then the mm -hmm. inside of those uh, would be a private pole patio and so forth lawn mm -hmm. and then we've introduced when you see the material board kind of these cool architectural terracotta screens just for an additional element to not also be stark white you know so i think i think it works really well yeah. but you know looks good and if it if the uh, landscape is like you're rendering i think it'll be a uh very nice. So these, they, they, those actually are the approved rendered to scale landscape. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Thank you. John? No, no real questions. I definitely noticed your signs going up a lot in the area, so welcome to Delray. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
and um, it looks definitely definitely an improvement. So nothing much. Okay. Any other comments? So yeah, I also concur with my colleagues that it's a vast improvement. I was um, not as excited about the first round as I am now. I do think um, it fits more in keeping with the style of the neighborhood. So thank you for coming back to us. I know it takes time. Um, and now, um, who'd like to make a motion to? Okay. I'll move approval of the class one 2022-103 for architectural elevations for 912 dash 930 Palm Trail as amended by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in chapter three of the land development regulations. And the second? I'll, I'll second. Okay, and Nick Gray is absent. Price Patton? Yes. John Brewer? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Harold Perez? Yes. Todd LaRue is absent. Dana Post-Adler? Yes. Happy birthday, Price. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Happy birthday, Price. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Patty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next on the agenda, we have Atlanta Crossing 2022-097. It's a concept re plan review discussion only. And um, we have, we, I need to ask if there's any ex parte communication. So, Chair, actually, I'll, I'll jump in because I'm not sure um, if some of you have had a concept plan review, and then certainly we don't have them often, so probably just a little refresher. Okay. Um, so, a concept plan review, um, before I, I guess I start, I just want to make sure, as my understanding, uh, we have one board member with a conflict because we worked on Atlantic Crossings, correct? Yes. Okay. So, um, since we're calling the item at this time, we need uh, Carol to step down to not participate in the process in abundance of caution. So I'm um, understanding, Carol, you've already filled out the paperwork for that as well? Yes. Great. Okay. So we'll give Carol a second to go into the timeout room. Okay. <laughs> So with a, a concept plan review, the board's not um, taking any action, and there's not a pending application that the board is actually reviewing. Uh, staff does not prepare a staff report that, that addresses the LDR requirements and so forth. So this is really the applicant uh, will make a presentation. Um, the board can comment as little um, as they'd like. As a reminder to the applicant and the board, um, the discussion is non-binding. It's not an analysis, it's not an approval, it's not a denial. Um, it's just the opportunity for the applicant to obtain the board's um, opinions just in a public format setting. So there'll be no formal motion, there'll be no need for ex parte or cross-examination, um, those types of things we do with quasi-judicial. So, uh, this is really more like a presentation than anything else, other than the fact the board gets uh, the opportunity to comment if they desire to. Thank you. Can we still ask for to state your name and address for the record, please? Absolutely. My name is Bryce Hall, Kephart Architects, 2555 Walnut Street, Denver, Colorado, 80205. Okay, and you want to make your presentation? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to present our modifications here this evening. And I thought it would be beneficial, given the breadth of the modifications we're proposing, to address a question as to why. Why at this time are we coming back and asking for such a modification to, to a site plan that was approved in 2014? This is eight years later, so what's, what's the story behind that? And I thought it'd be beneficial as a bit of a prelude to 
to share with you as an out of towner some you know my perspective on the, the you know the vibrancy of the direction of the city and, and the redevelopment I'm sure you guys are all very proud of it as you should be and you live it and you understand it well I, I'm coming from Denver and I've got a bit of a different perspective and I wanted to share that so two quick stories the first happened just yesterday as I was flying late into Fort Lauderdale I flew down on United and I leaf through Hemispheres magazine as I always do you know, I'm accustomed to seeing stories about, you know, in Paris and all the cities around the world. They're talking about the newest restaurants and the greatest hotels. It's fascinating stuff. And right there is The Ray, the new hotel here in Delray Beach. And I thought, how awesome is that? How great is it? I'm going to Delray Beach right now, and here it is in this magazine. So I thought that was fantastic. And what a reflection on the city. And then the other one was the last time I was here, of course, I'm out of town, so I'm taking Uber to the job site. I'm heading west down Atlantic Avenue, and you know how it is. You're, you're in an Uber. You're not really paying attention to what's going on. I'm probably checking emails on my phone. And as you get east of the tracks on Atlantic, you know, you're not paying close attention any longer, and the streetscape is less, you know, engaging as it is elsewhere along Atlantic. And yet, all of a sudden, I can feel that there's a change. All of a sudden, there's a great street presence, and I look to my left, and there's this beautiful new building, this white building right on the street. And it's actually building one of this Atlanta Crossing project that is the first to be erected and the first to be occupied. That's not a project that Kephart designed. Another architect, Lupton Rausch, did that design. But it is a part of this grander redevelopment that's happening. And I was like, wow, this is really amazing. And what a great improvement here. And how important is this to the vibrancy of Atlantic Avenue and the eastern portions of it? And we're very keenly sensitive as the architects of this project, as is the developer Edwards, that every building that's a part of this large Atlanta Crossing development have that same level of importance to the city to contribute in such a way to the community because ultimately it's not our building as the designers, it's not really Edwards as the developers, it's the city of Delray Beach, it's the communities that's going to live with these buildings for years and years to come. So with all that being said, this project was site approved in 2014. It was submitted in 2013. The design began in 2012, 10 years ago. And as the years have elapsed, Edwards communities, the developer has been very sensitive to being sure that as we continue to deliver these buildings over time, they are still appropriate and reacting to what's going on in the market so that we're delivering what's appropriate for the time, not what was important back in 2012. That times have changed for sure. And so we spend quite a bit of time ensuring that the architectural style and the program of the buildings are appropriate and that they will be just what they hope they would be, which is a wonderful addition to this community. And as we look back on, on building four, that's phase two, as Paul will show you here in a few moments of this project, we, we, re we realized, we in, a, in, in association with Edwards, that, okay, this is not really reacting to the market the way it did 10 years ago, it's a, it's a beautiful building. Yes, it's great. There's nothing wrong with it by any stretch. However, we think there is an improvement to be made. So that was my long-winded introduction as to why are we here today? You know, it's been approved, it looks great, so why are we here? We think that given where we are today and where the future of the city is going, we can do better. And Paul will now show you, uh, Paul, if you would, how we're gonna do better. So thank you for uh, bearing with those stories. Paul, can you state your name and address for the record? Yes, Paul Campbell, uh, 2555 Walnut Street, Denver, Colorado, 80205. And this, the switch here is I've, I've presented before, SPRAB before, probably in some of those early meetings back in, the, in 13 and 14. And so uh, besides talking a bit about what we would like to propose as a modification, as Bryce has identified, I'm going to spend a little bit of time maybe talking about some of the history. I, I recognize a number of you from years past, but maybe not everybody has heard exactly, you know, what was the thought process about Atlantic Crossing as a community. So this first image, uh, again, is right on that corner. It's, our, it's the signature building right at uh, Federal and Atlantic. This is we for we, we refer to this as building number one and uh, designed by Lupton Rausch uh, out of Ohio. Here's a, just a few minutes on the site plan. So everything being built right now, there's four buildings, a total of seven on all of Atlantic Crossing. And that first phase are buildings one, 
Oh, I'm not going to bother with that. One, we call it three, six south, and six north. Those are west of seventh up against federal. Uh, and we're starting from south, moving north. As we go to phase two on the east side of seventh, we've got, our, we've got building two, which is this guy right here. Building four south, we're going to talk about that one. Farther to the north is building uh, six, uh, excuse me, five uh, north. Four south, five north. Um, the, the concept about Atlantic Crossing was these seven buildings were going to have complementary but varied architecture. So the thought was, how do we come up with a, a number of buildings that, yes, it's an Atlantic Crossing community, but not have the same architecture on all four, on all seven buildings. That maybe uh, a campus might look like that, but we were really looking to get some variety. Cities develop over time and end up having different architecture, and that was sort of the thought process here. So I want to talk about, just, just introduce real briefly the architecture on the variety of buildings. The first, and, and I'm going to bounce around the site a little bit. The first one we'll go to is building two, which is the second building on Atlantic. Building two is intended to be almost like a bookend of building one. It's opposite handed, but a little bit different flavor in the architecture. This would be a view from Atlantic. Veterans Park is on our right hand side. We've got a little bit, obviously a, a bit of a different character than the building one that's uh, uh, under construction right now. A little bit of a art deco flavor in the center there. Now we're going to go to what we call Building 3. This is the very northern building that's right next to the building number one that's, that's almost ready to, to deliver. This is uh, a view uh, on the west side of Building 3. It's um, anchored by this very distinctive green wall kind of architecture that we're getting ready to install right now. The building has a bit of that uh, I guess what you guys would refer to as the uh, a Caribbean kind of feel from uh, your, your downtown uh, architecture guidelines. On the east side of that same building is, uh, this is still building three, it shows the art walk that's between the two buildings. Uh, starting to see, it, it, we had presented previously, uh, I think it was maybe a year ago, the introduction of this Eckelman sculpture over the intersection. We're still looking at how to make sure that that's anchored to the buildings, not only that are there now, but the buildings that are going to be coming in the future. Uh, a lot of excitement about that. We can't wait to be able to execute that project. This then jumps to uh, building six. This is the very northern building that's under construction right now. A little different flavor. This is our front door at our leasing office. And building five, now this would be the very northern building in phase two. Uh, it, it's a condominium. It's got a townhouse flavor, somewhat similar to the project you just looked at, a little bit bigger obviously, but some of the same concepts about breaking up the scale with color and materiality. So what we really want to talk about tonight, so we've gone around the horn, uh, This this, Next batch of work we're doing is comprised of two buildings, again, east of 7th. Building 2 that I showed earlier is right on Atlantic. That's not the building we want to talk about tonight. What we really want to do is get your feedback on the studies we've identified for what we call Building 4. I'm not going to go into the plan in a lot of detail, but Building 4, a very linear building, First floor is on the bottom. You're seeing a mix of some dining, uh, some retail, and some residential units. We had a total of five residential units on the first floor. Second floor, all residential and some amenity space. There's nine units on that floor. As we go up, again, nine and seven units respectively on each of those floors, again, with some amenity, but all, all uh, condominium. Uh, one of the shots we had presented, uh, this, this building on the first floor features this, basically our valet drop-off for all of Atlantic Crossing in this port feature, 
each swimming pool above, uh, so a lot of vibrancy and activity on that. But that's sort of the spine for the whole uh, valet drop-off for all of Atlantic Crossing when that building gets done. Here's the flavor. Oh, this, this look was very much a Meisner-esque the medieval revival, again, to, to use your vocabulary in its, uh, in its uh, architecture. We are looking to, oh, it's not advancing. Do I need to, I'm sort of stuck. I wonder, is there someone that can help? <laughs> I'm doing really good up until then. <laughs> okay, thank you. So this is our thoughts about a different architecture. And uh, Bryce mentioned that, well, gee, why, why would we bother to come in with different architecture? Well, one of the reasons is that from where we were before, we're seeing that the marketplace for a, a, a higher-end condominium is really looking to be much larger than we originally planned. The proposal we want to show you tonight basically keeps the footprint the same. There's a few modifications around the edges. Square footage is in the same ballpark, but the units, we've cut the units in half. So before we were coming to you, we had approval for 30 units. We're looking to cut those units down to 15, literally in half. Uh, every, every unit is going to be, we had a combination of large and small before. We're now all high-end, larger units. In fact, some of the units will have uh, semi-private elevator access from the garage to their front doors. So that gives you an idea of where these unit plans have changed from where we were before. Uh, one me, of the other- Excuse me, Mr. Yes, Campbell. Yes. What, can you orient me? What, what is the orientation of that? This is the same shot that we had from building, uh, from the previous shot. It's on 7th. So it, it isn't shown right now, but that Eckerman sculpture will be overhead. Okay, so, so that's east of 7th, and, and the, uh, the right side is facing um, south. The right side is, okay. yeah. If you were to keep going down the, that axis, you'd run into Veterans Park. Okay. Thank you. So at, in this plaza area right here, whoop, down, that's where... As you were going on 7th, if, you, if you've been out mm -hmm. there, you notice that there's a bit of a hump in the road. There's a speed table. That's to encourage pedestrian traffic from one side to the other and to be a bit of traffic calming. So that's at that very important intersection. And again, that's right past that is where we'd queue up for the valet. Uh, one of the other features about the change that we're bringing is to have much, much more, I mean, probably fourfold increase in the outdoor space on each of the units. They got bigger. Uh, we had some pretty good sized patios before, but one of the features now is to basically just have almost continuous patios uh, along the exterior. That and tall glass. The, the Meisner-esque kind of look, that, that medieval revival that we had before had very ornate windows, but it was more like a punched opening. And um, there's a place for that, but as these units get larger, some of the things you want to do is really maximize that <coughs> transparency to the outside. And what that does is that really starts us thinking about basically this different architecture that we're showing you tonight. Things like a very transparent railing, you know, whether it's cable or glass, we want that to be very, very transparent. We're seeing some interesting detailing in the uh, to break up the units, or to break up the, the elevation. I think I'll just probably see that better. Oh, well, just real briefly on the floor plans, I think the next illustration will show it, but you're starting to see, again, not a lot of detail here tonight to, to get into it, but a little bit less on the retail. Uh, no dining is in planned for this. We've got plenty of restaurants that are already happening in Atlantic Crossing, but larger footprints. Uh, from compared to where we were before, a little more of a rectilinear kind of solution as opposed to some of the, the curves that were there before. But the footprint is, is basically, we stayed in the same box. Again, minimal jigs and jogs changing. Here is uh, 
basically the uh, south, the, the northern elevation, that rotor, there's a rotor that basically is after you leave the valet area, there's a park between the buildings to the north and this building. And what we're starting to see is this idea, this introduction of, we're going to call it sort of a privacy screen. It's, it's really not a, a, a true privacy. There'll be slats that are basically this, this, these two and three story forms that form a bit of privacy, but also help to break up the scale of the building. So it creates modules that are a bit, oh, that, that doesn't work that well. That, that, that as we go on the long elevation, because it was a long rectilinear elevation, that break it up into the modules and give it some interest. You know, whether that's wood or aluminum that has a brown color, we're studying that right now. That's sort of some of our thoughts. Uh, we'd like to introduce that into the, our railing assemblies. Boy, I broke this one too. I'm not sure what I'm doing here <laughs> as far as. <laughs> uh, this just gives you an idea of some of the studies our designers are looking at in the, in the why of some of this. So we're introducing, the thought would be to introduce some of that brown color uh, into the railing assembly to just give it a bit of an accent as opposed to totally transparent, but mostly transparent. Some other thoughts on the screening, uh, maybe introduce some niches, uh, some very large volume niches in our stucco patterning to get a bit of interest. Uh, much like the townhomes you saw earlier, our thoughts were to get a bit of color in with uh, primarily stucco to, again, break it up, give it a, a pleasant feel. Some thoughts about uh, exposed aggregate uh, screening on, on some concrete down low as opposed to making it all stucco. Again, to get a bit of contrast, not just to have it all the same. If I can advance it, there. So. Um, we're studying how to make this change to react to uh, some, some units in, some, in a community that's going to be a, a bit different than we saw it 10 years ago. <coughs> and any feed, our, our goal is to, uh, based on some feedback we get from you tonight, uh, complete a true formal site plan modification that we know we will need uh, in short order. Um, our, our landscape will basically be, I, I think, rather minimally affected. You know, we'll have some planters that are going to have some different geometry, but we're pretty much sticking with the what we had approved previously. Uh, our site plan will have a few modifications, but quite honestly, the architecture is the thing that we were just looking to get any feedback we could from you tonight that might guide us in where we go next. <laughs> Okay, so given that this is a discussion, how, how do we now proceed? It's really up to the board's uh, discretion. I mean, this is, you can say as much or as little um, as you desire. My recommendation is if the board wants to provide any comments that they be very broad strokes. Um, obviously, again, you know, staff has not had the opportunity to review it, the full application and an, an LDR analysis. So um, this is really just more of a discussion. Nothing that you say is binding when they file the actual application and come back. Um, so it's really up to the individual board members how much or little you want to comment on uh, the presentation that the applicants presented. So just correct me. So there's no staff presentation right now, correct? Typically there's not. I, I assume, Rachel, you do not have a presentation. Correct. Is so, there, do I ask the public for their opinion? It's not a quasi-judicial no. item, so this is really just an opportunity for, for a presentation and for the board to provide any comments that they'd like to. Okay. I'll start. All right, go ahead, Price. Um, you know, I, I like the reduction in density. Yes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's helpful because I, I drive by there westbound every day, and sometimes it takes me 
20 minutes to get from the bridge to uh, Federal Highway. Um, and uh, and I like I like the openness. Um, I would since you since uh, you mentioned the ray, you guys should go by and take a look at it. I like the way the ray has incorporated plant plants and stuff like they do in Vancouver. You know, I mean, it, it just really gives it a much more um, um, uh, natural feel with with all that greenery. I know that if you look at the at the IPIC, the green wall and the IPIC, I think that costs like ten thousand dollars a month to maintain. So I don't. I think anyone could be asking to do, do that, but there are, you know, there are, there are, there are terraces with with cascading vines and stuff that look that look really attractive. Um, I like I like, and as long as you're, if you if you do go by to look at the eye pick, take a look at the color of the brown cladding they have. I, that, that's a much it's a darker brown than what you're showing, mm -hmm. and uh, to me that's an earthier color than that kind of um, <coughs> light brown. But um, no, I think it's. Uh, I, I like the reduction. It's it's still four stories, right? The one behind it is five stories, right? That's correct. The one in the far mm -hmm. northeast is five stories. That's correct. And um, uh, I think I think that I think that's about it. I like the clear. I like the clear railings. I like the architectural elements with the with the overhanging roofs. Um, so. I have a little trouble oriented myself for which was which way is which way is which. But here you're standing in uh, the parking lot of Veterans Park. Right. Looking at what would be the northeast corner of the building. This one is looking okay. Yeah. So I'm at I'm at in Veterans Park near Atlantic Avenue, looking back. Correct. Uh -huh. Exactly. You're kind of midway between Atlantic and the middle of the site, basically. And it's it's no higher than what was before, and there's no rooftop amenities, right? Yep, <laughs> it's been a pretty good move. Yeah, one of, one of my concerns when, because I've lived through this the entire iteration of this this project, um, you know, at some point, like around two o'clock, Atlantic Park is just going to be in the dark, mm -hmm. and um, you know, if there's if there are any cuts or something you could make in it that would at least allow some light to get into Atlantic Atlantic, uh, I mean Veterans Park, that would be good. And I've got to see that um, that Eshelman. A sculpture in the middle of a hurricane. I want to see how it, well, see how it reacts. You actually won't see it in the middle of a hurricane because so it's going to be coming the, down. Yeah, one of the things that I had mentioned in the presentation is there's going to be a very strict protocol for winds getting to a certain speed. They they are going to know exactly how long it takes and how big a crew they need and what mechanical what what rigs I, they need. I think one of the yeah I think one, of the, one of the earlier iterations was it was um, you're going to design it to withstand hurricane force winds. And, I was wondering how that was going to work. Not very well. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's, uh, those are my comments. Okay, hey, John? No, I'd stop me if I get out of my purvey here. Um, yeah. I, it's, as, as someone in commercial real estate, it seems like the Miami situation has come to Delray Beach, which is, uh, you know, they were turning condos and knocking walls down to take one condo and turn them into... Uh, taking four condos and turn them into one because of what happened uh, instead of summer homes or winter homes, vacation homes, folks wanted to live here now. So they wanted offices and bedrooms, and it seems like that's come to Delray. Um, I mean, the, the building has been done. It's been approved. Uh, you know, I, I, in Lake Ida today, I was part of a group that went around and saw a lot of the homes. And if you guys are like me, you've seen what's happening on Swinton the project that we pretty much had to approve on 22nd and now we have one of the old historic homes that's now been leveled and it's basically four lots now um my concern is i guess in more of a are we turning delray into a place that we can't afford to live you know that's basically my my big concern it's, it's beautiful the place looks beautiful i hope that i know that you guys have an arrangement with veterans park Love to see Veterans Park come around and become a place that people can enjoy safely. Um, I think there's a great opportunity. You know, me and one of the commissioners discussed what was going on with Bryant Park in New York City, where there is a private partnership right. that came along. So they actually take care of the park in such a way that the bathrooms are immaculate and well kept and the grounds are well kept and um, it's uh, I have, having lived in Manhattan, it's a great improvement of seeing the way that they run it. But 
Um, I understand it. I, I think what you guys, the changes you made were great. Um, you know, the way I was looking at it, it almost looked a little Vegasy to me, where it was like one hotel versus the other hotel, going from Excalibur to New York, New York, <laughs> to Caesars, you know? Um, so I think that there's a cohesiveness to it. I love the woods that you brought in. I think that it gives it a lot of warmth. Um, I think you've really, going back to Miami, I think you've really distinguished these from what you might see in Miami. So in that sense, I definitely applaud you. It, it, it looks great. So. Um, that that's basically my only real 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 input on that. You know, I appreciate both of the, the people that came today because they had projects that basically were passed, mm -hmm. and they could have just gone with the plans the way that they were, but they didn't. And I think that they were um, in in the right spirit of trying to improve the properties to um, uh, to to blend more or be more. Um, uh, appreciable for, for Delray. So I applaud you for that. Thank you. Thank you. It's Steve. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, let's see. So it's four stories. Um, you said 15 units. And That's correct. Uh, how are they distrib distributed among the stories? Is it five, five, five? Um, it's three, four, four, and four. I see. OK. And so are we looking at one unit now, like on each? Yeah, they're flats. They're, they're flats. OK. Yeah, they're, this building is not, it does not have a townhouse kind of look like one of our other structures does that. Right, right, right. And that's a wraparound porch, I see. Yep. Yep. No, I like the wood. Uh, the ray, the ray is def has, has that, I think it's a darker wood, but it's, it's very nice. Um, yeah, I think it looks great. Um, I like I like the overhangs. I, yeah, I got I know that's it. I got nothing else to say. So looks good. Well, thank you. Um, I concur with my colleagues about the look and feel. I think it's an improvement. Um, I am happy that there's less density now. Um, and again. I, I'm also concerned that we're pricing ourselves out of the market. It's been an ongoing issue here in Delray, and I'm just wondering, I think I know the answer, but is there any affordable housing? Oh, yes, there's definitely a requirement for okay. affordable housing that was a part of the original approval. Um, I'm less up on the mechanics. Um, I know Scott, I think, probably knows that stuff inside out, but I'm, I'm, I know it exists. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about exactly the, the numbers, but I, actually those numbers are on the cover sheet of the first sheet of the site plan, SP1, I think, if I remember right. Okay. But the answer is yes, there's okay. the affordable housing component on all of Atlantic Crossing. Okay, that's good to know. And then my second question, I mean, I, was, I wasn't around during the first iteration of all this back in 2012 to 2014. So having, going by uh, Federal Highway almost every day, you know, the setbacks are, are tough. And um, you went through the footprint for this new, um, this new building. Is, is there any difference in the setbacks at all, given the, the lower density? Uh, no, we're... Well, whatever modifications there were, they're extremely slight. So it's not like there were any large. I mean, we really look to keep our our saleable square footage the same or very very similar. We've just applied a new style to it. I will tell you that uh, the setbacks uh, along Federal on, on every aspect of the site were very meticulously scrubbed with the LDRs that that we're, we're bound by, and uh, we do comply. <laughs> and we'll continue to comply. OK. Well, I don't have any other questions. And again, I, I'll reiterate, thank you for coming back to us. And I definitely think this is um, much more in keeping with um, what's going on right now in Delray. And we really appreciate it. So thank Great. you so much. Well, I just, uh, Price? Oh, just double, double back on one thing. But uh, let, me, let me reiterate. Uh, add, add my voice to what, what John was saying about Veterans Park. Um, anything you can do. I hear you. Yeah. I'm, I think you can win some community uh, support because that was, you know, my son's 38 now, and I, and I used to push him on a swing in Veterans Park. 
you know, when there was, it was just a barren place. But in terms of maintenance, in terms of city, you know, private public partnerships, um, and, and more importantly, in terms of, in terms of public access. I think you know that that still is the city's park. It's it's almost impossible to get to now because of the construction, um, and that's that, that's you know that's understandable. But it's it's a great park. It's a great place mm -hmm. to um, for people to take their kids to play. So anything you can do to to promote it and enhance it and uh, make it uh, more accessible to the public would be would be appreciated. Well, as we bring. Phase two forward, working with staff, will make every effort to, to take on that comment. So I really appreciate the feedback. Um, I, I know there's, it's not an approval, but I, I, I guess I'm going to come away from this evening thinking that we got some encouragement in the direction we're going and can't wait to show you the real deal here, hopefully, before too much longer. One other quick thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not anticipating any waivers or variance requests? No, we've uh, been okay. pretty much had that hammered into us by staff <laughs> that uh, we don't want to do that. Thank you. What, what are the uh, square footages of the res residences? Do you know what's the, what's the range of square footage? Uh, I am not 100%. Can you speak to that one? Yeah, you know, they range. There's one uh, relatively small unit on the first ground floor, which I think is around 2,000 square feet, and they go up to 3,500. Okay. Rather sizable. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Any other comments? I'll just echo Paul's uh, thanks for your time and your comment. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for for taking the time to come, come to us. Okay, Mr. Poppy. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple things. The uh, with, with due to some changes, um, the SPRAD board will be going back to one meeting a month, and it'll be the the second meeting of the month. So it's you, that's normally they're typically the fourth Wednesday of the month. So you will be having uh, your next meeting, uh, SPRAB, on March twenty third. And then the following meeting will uh, take uh, take place on April twenty seventh. They would just be going one, once a month from then on. What's the, what's the May? Do you have the May date yet? The what? The, the date for May? I'm, I was going to go out of town. May is um, April, or excuse me, May May twenty fifth. <laughs> May twenty fifth. Yes. Perfect. It fits my plans. Thank you. Yes. So are we going to have tw like twice as many agenda items per meeting? Is that how it's going to? Depending on what, yeah, depending be depending on what's coming and what's what's ready to, ready to go to to the, to the board. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, you know the off, the the other side of the coin is you only meet once a month. So yeah. Right. Uh, then the other item I have is this. This will be my last. Sprab meeting as the, the board liaison. Um, uh, I have accepted another uh, position with the city. Uh, I, I'll still be the liaison with the board of adjustment. Uh, going forward, your liaisons, at least in the short term, um, until my replacement you know, has been found, uh, will be uh, Michelle Hoyland and Amy Alvarez. So they'll be going back and forth. Yes. Uh, I'm going to be the kind of the, the troubleshooter, if you will, uh, Mr. Fix It, between the planning and zoning department and the building division, and try to improve our uh, our service level um, on the permit side rather than on the site plan side. Sure. 
Oh, good. I'm coming in for permits soon. Too noisy. <laughs> yes. Does that mean part of the streaming, I, aren't we switching over to like more digital now? Is that what's going on or? Uh, um, in, in terms of? Uh, records and everything going to be more. We are, we're going through the process. We, and yeah, we're going, well, it's going to be a while, but we are going through the process of right now, and I forget the, the program name, Project project docs or something like that, uh, which is basically the, the, the portal for mm -hmm. submitting electronic building permits. Ultimately, that will then will be going to Intergov, uh, hopefully, um, and then that, that project docs will, be, will fit in and marry uh, with the, the Intergov. And then, so everything, even the site plan uh, applications will come in under the um, electronic uh, version that will completely be paper free well hopefully <laughs> <laughs> paper free at that point uh we'll we'll see it uh, yeah but uh yeah, yeah we're, we're moved we're moving in that direction to, awesome. to so come into the current century <laughs> Well, good luck, Scott. Yeah, good luck. We'll miss you. Uh, oh, what are you doing here? I know, I don't want to scare you because I didn't hear me come up behind you. And so, yeah, I did want to just um, acknowledge Scott's been the liaison for this group for a long time, and he's done a great job for all of you. So you're going to see some new faces. Scott's going to continue to do the board of adjustment. And um, so one of the, one of the um, comments from this board has been the concern that some of the Sorry, Rochelle. Some of the um, you know agreements with developers or extra requirements that have to happen prior to building permit, like there's some concern that those issues are getting lost between SPRAB and construction. And so this position, you know, it's really perfect for Scott because he's going to be the one helping us close some of those gaps and loopholes in the process. So you know we're taking an experienced person and, and just directing all that knowledge into. A different aspect of this process so that's why well, you won't see him so often I won't say never because you know sometimes we have to help each other out on our boards but you are going to meet some of our other principals for the next couple months and um, we're gonna be working to be filling um, a pretty high level planning position so if you know anybody you know be sure to <laughs> direct them our way we'll, we'll send the posting out to all the boards so um, but I did want to thank Scott so he's He's reprogramming into a different position, but also moving all these projects forward on the other side. So, okay. Yeah. So hopefully it'll make the uh, the process, uh, the the uh, the permit process, it should enhance it and speed it up a little bit. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we're we've got such a flood of pro of permits. We're in a, such a boom in South Florida in general, and when something hits a snag. You know, it sort of shifts to the side while we keep going, and so now we have somebody who's going to help us untangle the snags Good. as a full focus. So, so hopefully it's going to be better. Electronic plan review, like Scott said, it's going to be in two steps. Um, the goal that we're trying, striving to meet for commission is um, project docs live um, in October, um, and then there's a larger system that like messes with finance and tons of other. So that one's a little trickier, but honestly, it's it's getting that review simultaneously done as opposed to moving in the linear fashion that we're doing that's going to make the big change so you, the big the biggest bang for our buck is really the, the hopefully by october but we'll keep you guys posted thank you all for your service of course um, i'm a little concerned we're going to hopefully be able to do one meeting a month and not have you here super late but you know we will adjust if we have to we're just we're a little short staffed so <laughs> all right but thank you Thank you. Thank you. Although he's not leaving me. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If there's anything else, we can adjourn the meeting. I'd like to say oh. something, and, and it's good you're here too. Um, and this, Scott, thanks for all your work you've done, first of all. Thank you. <laughs> all these years. Um, on the site plan review checklist, there's an irrigation item, an irrigation plan item. Also on the historic board's preservation, um, our, their site plan submittal checklist also includes that irrigation plan. In the past, irrigation has been at time of permitting, or it maybe it was not wasn't enforced until time of permitting. We're not really up here reviewing irrigation plans. 
Um, and frankly, I think it's like jumping the gun to do an irrigation plan when you don't even have a site plan approval yet. So um, I'm just giving you my feedback. I think everyone would appreciate if that would be bumped to at time of permit or if you had um, discretion in that and could say, um, you know, if, I don't even know why there's a reason for that at this point. Come up internally as well as something. I think that's yeah, uh, chapter two issue. discussion. So I, I need to see if it, sorry. It's tough when you're at home to hear. Right. I've watched a few of these. I know, and, and we, we all hear each other fine, but um, oh. and she is, the tape sometimes won't work for her too, so. Um, so yes, that that has been something staffs also discussed internally. At, you know, it's it is it's something we're trying to figure out where the rule lives and what we need to change. Um, any of those ideas that you have, especially those of you who are practicing and you see it over and over again, um, one of the things that comes up is our survey requirement is six months instead of a year, like our neighbors. So there's some small things like that that we do want to try to get in and change. Um, so anything that you you see, you know, send, you, you can send them to Scott, and he'll make sure I get them too. But um, thank you. But yeah, absolutely, very useful to us. We try to streamline the process a bit. And Theo, while, while you're up there, two meetings ago, um, I was watching the commission, and uh, the poor and famous situation came up, and we got implied, I think, on that. And I think you were actually the one that was speaking to the commission on that, saying that we had kind of. No. Gotten outside of our purvey. So I think. we didn't. Um, it wasn't poor and famous. Okay. Um, how do I put this? Studio four. Studio four or four. Okay. Um, when we pulled the research for this for the certified set, you know, we went back and looked at the staff report, and the staff report didn't have all of the outdoor use that was on the certified set, and so we had to do quite a bit of research to figure out that including watch the meetings and things like that, that it had been a suggestion from this board at that point to utilize that outdoor space to make it more dynamic. We're still, you know, we were still piecing together sort of the landscape and some other things and, you know, why it didn't look maybe the way that we thought it should, but um, ultimately that wasn't this board or a recent project. It was a long history that had been approved before I was director and, you know, so we, we're trying to be very mindful. Everybody, everybody was so cryptic. I'm like, <laughs> I'd be talking about poor and so, famous. I would but, imagine. You know, look, it's, it's ultimately when you have a certified set, we were just doing the research to find out how the certified set got to be. They absolutely had a certified set for the record. Um, and, um, you know, we were just trying to build back as to, you know, the disconnect. And this is, you know, part of the reality of dealing with paper plans, too, and not having a digital history that we can find as quickly online, which we've made one ourselves now with gotcha. our server. But and it was definitely not a criticism of the current board, current staff, or it was just sort of one of those things where we're just trying to build the history to figure out how we got from here to there. I just that would, I just want to curious how we could prevent that in the future yeah. if that was indeed the case. So you cleared that up. That, that's so, that's yeah. perfect. I just want to make a general comment, if I could, about something that I think Dana brought up, which is affordable housing. And I think seeing what's going on right now with all the, the, the growth and the money that is coming here, and my comment about being priced out of the, the place that we, I'll, I'll say it, I, I lived here in the 80s, so built the soul of this place. Um, what it is, uh, the spirit of it, um, there's got to be some way, and I, I know it's not in ours, but maybe we can talk to the commissioners or whatever to find a trade-off where if they're building a, a, a project like this, then you're also building a project over here. Um, you know, I, I, there's also some density issues, I think, that have to be um, uh, um, uh, addressed because I know people don't like density, but density makes things more affordable. So, uh, you know, the bigger picture type thing, I just hope everyone would kind of think about it is, uh, you know, the parks too, we got all this money and all this tax base that's gonna be coming here. Let's take care of these parks. Let's make these parks absolutely incredible. Um, I mean, I was really shocked to hear that they're gonna be making the units that much bigger. I mean, that is, for the user, those of you who don't know, I'll, I'll let you in on a, a little, the, the Worthington Plaza. I know somebody that was paying 2,800 in rent. They just got their renewal. Their rent is now $4,200 a month. Where they can move. In Worthing? Yes. In Worthing place? Yeah. 
And they're the owners, five of them who were handed out recently, and the person I spoke to went down and spoke to the property manager, and they were just like, and they're, they're, my question to them was, is there really that much demand for people that have that much money? And they were like, yeah. So the people that moved here <laughs> that were considered those metropolitan type folks are now getting priced out for other people that are coming in. And I think we're leaving, we're, you know, who are we serving up here? Right. Who are we serving? You know, I, I, I've got an event coming up on Sunday that you're all invited to. It's a barbecue with Bill Caesar over at Caesar's Ribs, four and a half stars on Yelp reviews. Absolutely amazing, man. His family's been here forever. And, um, you know, what are we going to do for the set? What are we going to do to, to bridge that Swinton to, to I-95? I think that coming, you know, with all this, if we can think about those con in conjunction, you know, yeah, absolutely. Build your big stuff over here in your luxurious apartments and your retail and your restaurants. Absolutely. But you know what? Take a little bit off your, your profit margin and let's do a project over here where we're going to serve the community as well. I think. Yeah, and let's preserve like the local gems that we have. What's that? We have a, local gems, I like to call them, mm -hmm. in Delray. Like mm -hmm. some of the older places that are just amazing. And we, we should try to preserve those. Yeah. I'm just worried that they're getting priced out, though. Absolutely. And, and also, I, I see a lot of empty commercial space walking around. I really do. And I'm like, just they're building more and more and more. It's like, why don't they try to occupy existing? I just think that's a, yeah, absolutely. I think it's a broader discussion that I hope we all can, yeah. I don't know how it gets incorporated, but it's sad to say that. So I do want to add one thing to that issue. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but our legislature, uh, the state legislature, about three, three years ago, actually passed regulation that stops us from requiring a set aside from every project. Oh, wow. So we have to do it through incentives, like you're talking about density, height. Um, you know, it's part of why we, we were restructuring our comprehensive plan to say the base density is this, but through incentives, you can go higher, and the incentives right now are all affordable housing base, but we have had that tool taken away from us in terms of, um, you know, it is, I mean, for those of us who own homes, great, we're all rich on paper, you know, we can't move, but um, so, um, but, you know, for the next generation and, you know, where, where are they going to live? So it's a challenge. Um, the city does have an affordable housing um Action Committee, um, I think that's with AHAC, they meet tomorrow. We're going to meet with them from Development Services as well. Um, but it, it is absolutely a, a really important issue. And unfortunately, you know, our community worries about density and height, but right now that's one of the only tools we have to try to coax it out of the new projects that come out. So just food for thought. Not no, I know everybody up here voting for Island Cove and everything like that. We're very encouraged to yeah. see that, and we know that we need more of it here, but the, the stats that they relayed to us were absolutely staggering in yeah. my opinion yeah. and uh and then to come in and have these gentlemen yeah. god bless them you know proposing these million projects and you know like i spent my day in lake ida where i live and seeing some of the homes that have been built actually walking inside of some of these homes i was like oh my goodness right. <laughs> This ain't the, I graduated from high school at Plamosa in 1983. This is not the same town anymore, you know? Um, so those are my thoughts. Thank you. I think we all feel similarly. All right, so if there's nothing else, no more comments, we can adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Hey, uh, do the hammer. You get to do the hammer. Oh. <laughs>